All right, guys. We're we're joined by uh, Wen Rivers, mate. Thanks for thanks for joining us. No problem. Oh, yeah. thanks, thanks for having me. us. Yeah. So uh, you guys released your album uh, on November twentieth, and as I just said, you off uh, I people, if you've not got this on pre-order, go do it because it's is one album you won't regret purchasing. Um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, be sent a copy of this across. It's not left my car radio since. You guys must be so happy with how this album's come out. Oh, man, we're so proud of it. Yeah, we are really proud. absolutely. Yeah, I think because we've done two EPs in the last, like, year. We've put yeah. out two other EPs, and they've really, like, helped us to... Like, we were so sure on what we wanted when we went in for the album. Like, the EPs, yeah. we were kind of, like, finding our way. Yeah, fine. But the album, we were like, right, you all know what we're going to do. Let's go with it, you know? So, yeah, yeah we're really happy. Even the, the production on it sounds so big, though, as well. The anthemics on that production is... Sometimes you get a... You get a I've known the sort of debut albums in the past where it sounds a little thin because the product producer or whatever doesn't seem to quite grasp the act and their swagger and their live feel. But the the whole thing's got this huge sound to it. He's done a Adam's done a stunning job on the production of this. He yeah. has, yeah. Most definitely, yeah. He was a proper find, Adam. Yeah. He's been a game changer. And because he's a multi instrumentalist, so he's mm. bass, drums, uh, okay. um, so there's not actually a lot of layers on the songs, no. but it still sounds mega full. It sounds like, right, yeah, really full, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because no, we've done the EPs with him, we kind of, as soon as we went in to do the album, we all knew exactly what kind of he sound He knew what we, we wanted, before, yeah. and yeah. Which was it, awesome. It was just oh, cool. So he produced the EPs as well, did he? Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. Oh, sweet. So what Great. made you choose the, uh, the Boathouse Studios then? Well, um, we just found him, and we... Uh, straight away got on with him and I think was... we had some friends who'd done some recording yeah. with him and because Adam's he's not got like a posh studio it's not it's mm -hmm. he um he lives by the river in Suffolk on the Orwell in the middle and... of he's, not that, he's not he's not that far from me oh really, oh, really? Oh, no, really? A, no um we're I'm, I'm just outside Barry St Edmund, so he's like 40 minutes away oh, it wasn't oh, until yeah, I just yeah. had a a quick look at the the press release, and I realised where you guys had recorded it. I wasn't I wasn't aware, and I thought, wow, they're only up there. They only recorded yeah, this up the road. Totally. And um, so you know, it's really pretty yeah. down there. Yeah, and we record in. He, Adam lives in a boathouse. It's just got like you know mezzanine mm -hmm. and stuff for his bedroom. Yeah. And we just record in the open plan space. So. Yeah. It was so nice because we recorded through summer. We weren't stuck in like some nasty studio that you can't see the sunlight. You know, it was really nice. Yeah, I mean, just literally go looking out the window and you've got the all well there and the boats floating past and you're like, oh, it's just cool. Yeah. You can hear the birds singing on a yeah. lot of the recordings where yeah. it was, you could just hear it through the windows, you know, it's really cool. Oh, that's wicked. That's kind of uh, fed into the, to the feel while you were writing and laying it all down. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and at the last track on the album, We Fly Free, we actually, there was, we, it was another track we were going to, was going to be the 12th track, and when we went in the studio, it, it just wasn't flowing, and right. we don't, as much as, like, you, we have to work on stuff, we don't like to push stuff, if it doesn't work, we're like, no, we just scrap you it. know, yeah. so yeah. We, we just went, we've got an old V-Dub van that we park outside the studio, so we just went in the van and just... Had a cup of tea overlooking the river <laughs> and broke yeah. me by green. Yeah. Out. We're like, yeah. ah, that's Sorry. the final track. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those things are just, it's meant to go that way, isn't it? You hear so many choices sure. like classic albums where they either were having to have one more track to fill the album or in the situation you have the stuff they haven't won working for whatever reason. And then they go and, and write the song and that song and normally ends up being one of the, the ones they were definitely supposed to write for the album. Totally. Sure. Yeah, yeah, meant to be. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, for anybody who's not aware of you guys, would you like to give them a bit of a, a bit of a band history, a bit of uh, band influences, etc.? Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, our influences are classic rock and classic blues. So, anything from like Robert Johnson and John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, people like that, going yeah. into Led Zeppelin, Bad Company, that sort of vibe. That's that's the common. And we've got at. a little bit of a different twist because I yeah. play a mandolin. Um, Normally, I've got a resonator mandolin and I play with a slide most of the time, which is a bit weird. Through a Marshall amp, which is even weirder, but cooler. Oh, and, sounds good, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds really, like, it sounds yeah. like electric guitar a lot of the yeah. time now, doesn't it? Yeah. It's cool. And I play violin, so we've got some different elements that we throw in. And when we recorded, we recorded it in a, in a very classic sort of 60s, 70s way, where it's a big open space. Lots yeah. of microphones all over the Live place. Live takes. We didn't Live want to pull takes, anything yeah. to pieces and make yeah. things too perfect. We, yeah, you know, right. we didn't want to kill it. We wanted to keep some energy in it. For sure. Yeah. That's cool. It's funny you mentioned the, the Zeppelin thing, because when I was listening to it, one of the albums, not necessarily 
I'm not saying it sounded like in terms of copying anyone or anything, but just in terms of vibe, it really reminded of Robert Plant's last album, Carry Fire, with this sort of big, more African rhythms and that kind of slight more, I don't know. Yeah. It, it just had that sort of vibe to me for it. I mean, one of the, one of the songs, thank you, one of the songs is kind of, very much a raising sands kind of yeah that was an inspiration you know, so, on the yeah. Ida Fallen track yeah. four that yeah. was oh, yeah. that soundscape and yeah we was it that one and um, because like, I can't play drums like definitely can't play drums <laughs> but it was that one where I was like the drums need to be like random and because Adam's a really good drummer he's like I can't really do random he was like yeah you, you can really do random so uh, some of it went on I think <laughs> A case of a drummer wasn't needed on that one. It was somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's not too good. It's got to be a little bit broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that Alison Klaus record that he did with her was fantastic. But I can yeah, see exactly. now you've now you've mentioned it. Yeah, I can I can see why that was a an influence on you guys. Definitely, and I think because we've got the like say the other instruments, it kind of often leans into an Americana vibe. Yeah. yeah. So, um, some of the songs lean more into that than others on yeah. the record. But, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's definitely a, uh, an album with light and shade, like you say. You've got your, your like your single battleground is obviously a bit more of a more of a rocky uh, going down that route, and then you say you've got your, your more sort of not acoustic, but your lighter, more slightly atmospheric kind of stuff on there. Um, is there obviously you've released Battleground, and that's been doing amazingly. We've always had like really good feedback off the show. When oh, we've, cool, oh, yeah, that's Thank amazing. You. I know it's all good. I've always said on this show, I don't play anything I don't like. It. It's, just, it's as simple as that. <laughs> if, if I like it, it goes on. If I don't, it doesn't. Um, I'm just a rock fan who is fortunate enough to have a, an outlet. to, And I, I just get to sit and play music I like for a couple of hours, so it's good by me. A bit oh, self-indulgent sometimes, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've obviously released Battleground. That's been doing well. You won uh, the classic rock uh, track of the week with that. Yeah, yeah, we're over the moon with that. No, it's just crazy. Good. Yeah. yeah, love it. Yeah. There were some crazy. strong contenders in that round. There was a lot of good singles. Yeah, yeah, we did not think because it was a real tough round. Mm. There was Larkin mm. Poe and some other real big hitters on there. Yeah. So we didn't. Um, well, we didn't think we stood a chance, to be honest. No, really. we didn't. But so. yeah, so we were well chuffed. I must say, I was checking. I must have checked to see <laughs> to see who the winner was secretly, like literally a thousand times, yeah. pretending I didn't care. I was like, no, no, I'm not only really that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I won! laughs> and it was like that as well. Yeah, I like that pitch as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Probably a bit louder, actually. It lasted about half an hour. There was a lot of we are the champions. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you can't congratulate yourselves, who can you congratulate? Yeah, yeah, totally. Hey, jump from the back. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other songs on the album that you're particularly look excited for people to hear? Uh, yeah, Did I Break the Law. Uh, at the moment, that is our favourite, favourite song to play. I love playing it because it's just like rock and slide guitar. Yeah. And that's, that's I love the slide song. guitar on that. Oh, cheers, I man. love the sound of that slide guitar on that. Obviously, that being the, the opening track. So I'm, yeah. I'm always cool when I get an album that's in the car stereo on the way to work. And I was, that came in and I was going, OK, now I can see I'm getting sent this. And then, oh. to the point, by the time I got to work, I was on to uh, well, Kissing the Sky by the time I got to work. And uh, I got to work a few minutes before I had to be in the office. So I went, no, I'm just staying here for a bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm get oh, to the end man, of this one. Cool. <laughs> no, uh, no, one of the lads at the work walked past the car park and he's all going, you're all right, <laughs> I'll be in in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> oh, that's really oh, cool. That's awesome. Thank you. No, it's all right. Like I say, I'd like you to say things I mean. I got up into the office and the guy I worked with, he went, why were you sitting in the car park? And he was, were you on the phone? I went, no, I was listening to an album. <laughs> what? <laughs> We've got work to do. And I was like, I don't, I don't have to be in for another five minutes. Uh, <laughs> oh, really, oh, oh that's really awesome. That's really cool. That's well cool. <laughs> so, uh, well, I know it's been a funny year music-wise for everybody with everything that's been going on. Have you guys got sort of any immediate plans? Although it's not obviously too easy to make those at the moment. No, I mean, at the moment, we're, we obviously we're releasing our album on the 20th of November. So we're just really prepping for all that because we're, we're DIY, we're doing everything ourselves. Oh, cool. Literally, yeah, I mean, we've got no management or label or anything like that. So we're spending a lot of time packing, yeah. packing CDs and oh, that's good. Like, trying yeah. not to break the dime. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but also, we, we have got a few, um, a really good um, support slot tour 
for next year. We can't announce it yet. No, so no. we're just really hopeful that it's going to happen. Yeah, cross fingers. Yeah. <laughs> just, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we're hopeful for that. And other than that, we're just doing our live streams every Saturday night and uh, for an hour, uh, eight till nine. And then yeah. with the prospect as well of, of maybe a further lockdown today, that's yeah. not a good yeah. sign, is it? So, yeah. yeah, we're just focusing on what we can do. And yeah, totally. like all the focus has been online just because there was, there's been nothing else, is there? <laughs> so, no, that's right. No, no there hasn't. Like, I've not been to a gig since Planet Rock Winter's End was the last one I went to, like end of February. And wow, that's yeah. horrible for me. <laughs> I don't, you yeah. know, live music is a, is a huge thing. And I, yeah, been out of, it's been bad enough not going to them, let alone playing them. So I can't imagine how sure. you guys yeah. have been feeling, not being able to even, like, obviously you've been doing your, your streams, like you say, but uh, to not get out in front of a physical audience. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is rubbish, you know. And the live streams, when we first started doing them, they felt horrible because it's, uh, it's, it's unnatural. It's just weird, you know, yeah. but, play in front of a but phone. But now that's quite, people, yeah, that weird. feels quite normal. Yeah. And we would really miss it now because it's a gig. It's once a week. We like, you yeah. know, we prep yeah. for a gig we and get it's dressed up and everything yeah, as well. Cool. But um, and I think it's made us realise quite how much like music plays a huge part in our lives because yeah. it's what we do. But but so many people who go to gigs mm. really regularly, like it's it's right. the same thing. We both, you know, everyone misses it, don't they? Oh, definitely, hands down. I think that's with me and my mates. We're all the same. We're all rock fans and just love going to gigs and. Um, I put on a, a yearly, um, I lost my dad to cancer 10 years ago, and um, thanks man, and I um, put on an annual event uh, for the hospice that looked after him, and um, we do that every year, we had, we're supposed to have those damn crows headlining this year, and a bunch of other great bands, and I had to put that back a year, because oh, of everything right. that's going on, and that was bad enough moving that, and that's just one gig, and you think yeah. of like, one like yourselves, we had to put on dozens of gigs back, I just... I can't even make, I know how stressed out I was trying to rework just the one. So yeah, I hate yeah. to think what you guys have all that to, to go through for sure. Yeah, I mean, when we when it kicked off, we, we ended up just saying, because lots of um, the gigs were, you know, we'd planned the tours because we've got the the old VW bus. Mm. So we we plan, you know, we'll, we'll work our way around on a route. So, you know, as, as like the odd gig was falling off, it's like, it's not viable. We can't do it. So we ended up just cancelling literally everything yeah we yeah. just you know yeah. we just end up cancelling everything which we didn't know if we were going to have to do that to start with but we kind of yeah. had to because mm. of how it played out but um yeah. and of course there's no there's no point in even rescheduling most of those at the moment because no. it's just you know, no like you say even even this morning it's uh looking like i'm potentially another lockdown i was in the gym this morning and it was sort of came on the news that we're going to get addressed at some point this afternoon or whatever. Yeah. Five yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's really tough to to make like um, plans and we've kind of not we've tried not to think about it too much because it, it's it's pressing isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. We try not just, to focus, just, yeah just focus on what we can do online and and right. hopefully grow our audience so that when we do go out we have we can play even cooler venues absolutely <laughs> <laughs> just skip a couple of steps and go to the ones you want to play yeah exactly. definitely <laughs> <Wembley>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That'd be hell of a first gig back, wouldn't it? Oh, man, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, the only time I had anything like that, um, my wife's brother, he plays drums, and he was playing in an ACDC tribute band. And he got given the chance to, uh, they were doing the after party at the Stone Free Festival, that was the O2 Arena. Oh, and basically, wow. uh, basically that morning, he, he said to me, oh, I've just found out I've got, I can, if you come help me with the drums, I can get you in for free. Nice. So I was like, nice. Alice Cooper's playing, I'm going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and we were trying to find our way. We'd I'd gone down with James and, and my wife's dad, and we were sort of trying to find a way around. We'd got and got the drum set up, drum set up in the in the other room. It wasn't in the main room. It was in the side room. And um, got them set up, and they went right. There's your passes. Come back at you know when Alice Cooper's done it, and we'll get going. So, okay. Mm. We went to go to like the main doors as you come through the entrance. At which point I didn't realise that that's entrance B, which I'd never noticed because I'd always just gone through the punter's door, obviously. Mm. And uh, these security blokes going, no, mate, you need to uh, go entrance A, it's artist, and press entrance down there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, you need to go now. Like, okay, I don't care. I'm going to go watch Alice Cooper wherever I get in, I get in. And we've got through the door, and this is a security bloke there. And it was a bit like in Wayne's World, I was sort of flashing the past. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, here. And he's, yeah, he's, and we, he's, going, he's looking at us because we all looked a bit confused. And he went, where, where, what, what do you want to do? I said, well, we want to go watch a band. At which point the darkness were playing. Right. 
And um, we said, well, we're going to go and watch The Darkness and Alice Cooper. And he said, fine, just go straight to the end of the corridor and keep going. Well, I didn't really look where I was going. I just kept going straight. And then there were some steps. And I got about three quarters away up the steps. And, uh, yeah, my brother and father and all looking at me going, Lee, get down, get down. I'm going, what? And I looked up and I realised I was just about to walk on stage of the O2. Oh, oh, <laughs> so I just walked out and I kind of went, oh, I was just behind the curtain. I was like, oh, I better. <laughs> I could see, like, Dan Hawkins looking at me as he's going, who's this bloke coming up the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of, you know, on that Michael McIntyre show, when they set up traps yeah. and people end up yeah. walking on the stage? It's yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that's that's the closest I've got to a big stage, and I shouldn't have been there in the first place. So. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a quick exit at that point. Like, quick, let's get in the crowd before I get pulled out of the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> get rugby get tackled from yeah, some yeah, side totally. angle. <laughs> yeah. I've had that happen before. <laughs> so, what have you guys been listening to in lockdown? Is there any artists that you've discovered in this period? I've sort of been rediscovering stuff myself and going back through old albums. But... So I think yeah. we, we always gravitate towards the classics, to be yeah. honest. Massive, mm. like, free Bad Company fan. Yeah. And Bonnie Ray always listen to that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you're, you've Just... been having a bit of um, a Thunder, Guns N' yes. uh, Roses revolution. Yeah, Nirvana, ah. Metallica, just pretty much everything, to But be then we, we've yeah. been finding, there have been so many new bands we have found, like... Yeah. Um, like King King, and King, King like Bad, Touch, yeah, Bad Touch, um, Ida May, yeah. um, oh. Lateral, yeah. Heat, just loads, yeah, loads of different bands that we've been sort of. Samantha Fish, oh, um, Robert, Samantha John Fish. And the Robert John and the Wreck. Robert John and the Wreck. Robert John and the Wreck, great band, yeah. 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 Uh, Larkin Poe, yeah, we found, yeah, sort of loads, didn't we? So. Yeah, uh, definitely. You mentioned well. Bad Touch, I know the Bad Touch boys pretty well. They're actually playing the, the festival that I was saying about that I organised there. Oh, oh almost yeah. because okay. they're Norwich, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, sort of. I went to uni there, so that's where I first first, first saw Metal oh, nice. first first starting out and stuff. But yeah, no, no, they're a great band. There's a there's a lot of good stuff going on around. It feels like there's a, a genuine scene for the first time in a in a long time with bands rising through the like, Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of a bit, a bit of, a of a revolution, revolution going, going on. on. Yeah. yeah, definitely, they're definitely. I think people are wanting a bit more rollback in their rock. And definitely. as much as I do like some heavy stuff, don't get me wrong, I've always been a, a classic rock and a hard rock blues bass guy at heart really so Good job. yeah yeah same there, mate. Same there. <laughs> yeah you know it was that was from my dad really you know 11 years old get taken to see aerosmith you don't you don't oh, take, oh no but, way yeah oh that is cool we still ain't seen aerosmith yet have we? oh he's one of my favorite singers yeah, i love steve oh. yeah. all right oh, oh nice. wow <laughs> nice. oh, yeah my dad so had it done and then i went and got it done when i hit 18. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I will so are they like, your epic? Are they your number one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, I, I saw quite liked me music, and then my dad was going to see Aerosmith with his friends when I was about eleven, and he went, "You're coming." I was like, "All right." And so I walked in, this little shy eleven-year-old kid, and I walked out going, "Dad, I, I need that tattoo." Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was great. I mean, I mean, support, even support act on that tour was when they did uh, Wem- that was at Wembley, the old Wembley Stadium. And uh, they had like Black Crows were supporting, and uh, Lenny Kravitz, uh, nice. Stereophonix, and Three Colours Red Wolves were on the bill. I think that was it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but I remember like Lenny Kravitz was insane. I remember like turning to my dad and going like, like, what are Aerosmith going to do to beat this? They they can't beat this because it was first gig. That was the best thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. I uh, just was like, just 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 watch, mate. It'll be fine. <laughs> And sure enough, oh, yeah, they came out and and, not, and uh, took up into the stratosphere. But yeah, they're definitely yeah. my. Oh, oh yeah, well, we'll cool. be huge Aerosmith fans. Yeah. Oh, nice. Are you like me though? Are you more old school? More rock. Yeah, I mean, mm. the I thing like is though, even in the more recent album, like the music from another dimension album, which they released a couple of years ago, that's some real like old school sound and stuff on it, like Street Jesus and stuff. There was more like raw Aerosmith. There was yeah. Ballads on it, don't get me wrong, but if there was more raw bluesy Aerosmith on that record than they've done. Yeah. yeah, I think we tend to always gravitate to like the original, like the, the early stuff, stuff with yeah. other bands. Really. Yeah. yeah, I think because it's quite easy um, 
as like as bands go on to mm. to get more of a produced sound yeah, and everything like gets stuff, bigger and yeah. it's even like with Guns N' Roses we like the early stuff like yeah. where it's a little bit rawer and that, like yeah. it's it's not as pre- not not predictable but I guess just less produced less produced yeah, yeah. that's the point doesn't it like you say you go further on the line and some producers are great and some producers will just want that poor sound and the others there's adding atmospherics to make the sound big and then it starts to get a bit derived from what the band it's is. too perfect and yeah. Yeah. yeah and to me that's that's why i love watching a band live because there's nothing better than watching a band live and they play a bomb note yeah, exactly yeah it's, it's well, guys, that's, we do that all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant i love your gigs then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah it happens <laughs> yeah, it's, all, it's all good though i mean it's just yeah, yeah. Like you say it's real, isn't it? It's not supposed to be perfect. No. no, rock and roll ain't supposed to be perfect. It's Definitely. just supposed to be good. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's the same when we saw Velvet Revolver um, playing, and like you mentioned, Guns, but we saw Velvet yeah. Revolver and Slash was doing the solo, and this bloke next to me is like, oh, that's not the solo that's on the album. And you're like, it's Slash. He can play what he bloody likes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, he, can come, he can come on and play it with a remote TV remote control, and I wouldn't care. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. do what he wants. Yeah. I think as well, it keeps it, like, you do want to hear stuff. There's that temptation to want to hear stuff as it is on the record, how you know it. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, like, it keeps it fresh for you. Like, when we play stuff, even, mm-hmm. yeah, not okay. comparing us to Slash, but um, <laughs> but you do, like... It does song, change things up a little bit. Yeah, 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 they're totally, alive. Yeah. You have, they do just change over time. Yeah. And even, like, when you go back to the record, you'll be like geez, we've changed that a lot. And sometimes we'll be like, well, yeah. that we kind of like that, how it was, we'll put that back. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. all got to be, the music's like alive, isn't it? It doesn't just totally. stay the same. Yeah, but the thing is, the more, more times you play a riff, more times you sing a song, you're always going to have those slight modifications when you're doing it. And, yeah. you know, songs grow over time. You know, you go see, like we mentioned, Aerosmith, if you go see them now and they do, I don't know, Dream On, it's not the same when they recorded yeah. it in 1972. You know, it's not going to yeah. be. No. That's, that's the, the way it is. So... Are there any more singles that you guys are releasing before the album comes out at all? Yeah, we're going to be releasing Did I Break the Law? Um, oh. That should be on the, the, the date of release. I think it's going to be on the yeah. album release date. Oh, yeah, no, on the... It'll oh, come out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's really exciting. And it's been kind of tricky getting, um, like, because of lockdown, like music videos and stuff, yeah, yeah. it's been really sort of tricky. But, yeah, we, we're, we're working it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. All right, then. So what song would you like us to air the interview out on? What song do you think you want playing to represent the album and why people should go buy it? I mean, I'm just going to whack them around the head with a baseball bat and tell them to go buy it anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, I think Battleground or, or Did I Break the Law, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I know you say your listeners have heard, heard Battleground a bit, so maybe Did I Break the Law yeah. would be really cool. It's, All right. um, yeah, we just it's got loads of energy. Like we say, it's the favourite song to sing live and there's some really big notes that I can hit, which is my favourite thing to do in life. Yeah. So that's I'm For happy sure. with did I break the law? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll sandwich it. We'll open up the interview, play Battleground, <laughs> then we'll play the interview, and then yeah. we'll close down Did I Break the Law. We'll do oh, that. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Perfect. No worries. Well, thanks for your time, guys. It's been an absolute yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, mate. Cheers. Thanks. You look after yourself. You yeah. too, guys. And uh hopefully I'll see you on the road soon. Fingers crossed. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Let's see you soon. Hey guys. Yeah. Cheers, Bye. buddy. Bye. Bye.